Hello and welcome back to the new Super Mario Brothers DS level editor tutorials. This is part three and this time we're going to be talking about sprites. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so you'll probably recognize this level from the uh, previous tutorial. This is the one that we build using objects. And uh, I've added a little Goomba here. So you'll click on the Goomba and you'll notice over here some, some different values. First is uh, what sprite type we've selected. This is the number that corresponds to the sprite that we're using. So I could change it to 149 and now it's a Koopa Troopa. And change it back to 148 and it's a Goomba. The other thing you'll notice is the screen positioning, the X and the Y. This is just where it's located. Uh, of course you can change all this uh, by just clicking and dragging them around. But uh, here's some confusing stuff. We have this this attribute called spawn and another attribute called raw sprite data. Now these are actually related. Uh, so you'll see uh, you can change spawn to normal, spinning, or rising and it'll change one of the values in the sprite data. So now this last number is 0, 2. We change it to spinning, it's 0, 1. We change it to normal, it's 0, 0. Let me show you a sprite that has more data on it. So Koopa Troopa. This has uh, two fields. We can change its color to green, red, blue, or blue stay on ledge so that it acts like a uh, red turtle. You know, it doesn't. When it gets to the edge, it'll just turn around. Uh, so we change it to red, and we'll see him update there red. And this number turned to 0, 1 at the end. Change it to blue, and it's 0, 2. Change it to blue stay on ledge, and it's 0, 3. We can click this in shell and that'll make it so that when uh, the game loads he'll appear just in his shell and after a little bit of time he'll poke, pocket, poke, poke his head out and uh, start walking towards you. But as I click in shell on and off you'll see that this 0 and 1 toggle from 0 to 1. 0, 1, 0. So uh, let me show you another one with even more attributes. So now we've got all zeros in the sprite data. We can change its what direction it's moving, and that changes this attribute there, the zero to the one. Up down, jumping is now three. Change its color, and the last last bit there changes. We can change its starting direction, and that one changes. Or we can change its uh, starting position, and that changes. We can also uh, go in here and manually change this. So I'll change this to a 1 and it's color updated to red. Change it to a 2 and it color changed to blue. A valid sprite data contains uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, what we call nibbles. A nibble is an individual number in here. If you don't have 12 in here, for example, here I have 8, it shows red, and it, and it won't work properly. And uh, when you click back on it, it'll kind of fill in that data for you. Now you're probably asking, how does the direction correspond to here? Why are some sprites, like the Goomba, its spawn is adjusted by this last attribute. However, with the Koopa Troopa, its colors corresponding to that last attribute. And that's because every sprite is unique, like a beautiful snowflake. In this list, there are about 323 different kinds of sprites. Each of them acts differently. They've all got different uh, variables that you can manipulate. For example, this Koopa can have a blue shell, but this moving stone block probably isn't going to be blue if you do anything with it. Or this uh, left flying question mark block isn't going to be blue. It has different values. So each sprite, here we've got, for example, the, the last bit here, the last little nibble, is what item is found inside of it. This is a strange one, a Mario with a, with a vine. But you have just a regular question mark switch, a star, a mushroom or a flower, and so on, or a coin. Now, every single sprite has different sprite data. And uh, over at the forums, we've actually spent quite a bit of time researching and studying each of these sprites in this list to find out what the different data in the sprite does. 
And uh, you can find that by going to the forums, logging in, and uh, clicking Sprite Database up here at the top. What you'll find is a list of all of the sprites and the information that we found for that sprite. So uh, we can go down here to 149 where the Koopa is. Oops, I scrolled past it. So 149 Koopa Troopa, and it says color, list at nibble 11. Remember, nibble is the individual number. Nibble 11 is 0, 1, 2, 3. So uh, you go over here and you count which nibble it is, and you change it to this attribute, and it'll, it'll update with that. Now it's kind of a pain to go here all of the time, and that's why this editor has a pretty nifty little feature built into it that uh, actually updates automatically according to that sprite database on the forums. So if you go here to tools and options on your main uh, window, you'll see here it says update sprite data.txt and auto update. If you click this button, it actually looks at this database, pulls all of this data, and then imports it into the game and then creates these rows and fields for you. So uh, if we were to go in here and change this from a list to, to a binary or an index or a different kind of value, when we go back in here and restart the program, then, uh, then these attributes will be changed. The kind of interaction will be changed or the name will be changed. Now anybody has access to this sprite database that logs in and not only do you have read access, you have write access. And what that means is that I can go in here and I can actually change this. And so I could say 0 equals purple and then save. Um, of course, that creates some security issues, but we update this database every night. So if anybody gets in there and starts doing any sort of anarchy type work, we'll be able to find out who did it, ban you, and then restore the database back to normal. So be responsible, huh? Now, as uh, you find some of these sprites, we don't have all of the data for all of the sprites. So if you're playing around with one of the sprites and you find some new data in it that nobody has found before, you can log in, go in here and say, okay, for this one-way door, for example, or I don't know where it went, or say for pumpkin, you've somehow figured out, oh, I found a new, uh, a new value for the pumpkin and I can make him explode on contact if I set nibble 3 to value 7 or whatever it is whatever kind of data that you found you can do that um, then when you update this it'll update in the game so when you click on the pumpkin you'll see that new field here so that's a pretty useful uh, trick anybody can do that um, and like I said be very responsible with what you're doing uh, we have found a lot of these. The ones that are green in this list are ones that we believe we've discovered everything about uh, in terms of its sprite data. But if you're uh, the general user, the average user that doesn't really care too much about exploring or experimenting with uh, different sprite data, you're not going to really have to worry about it. Uh, like I said, most of the sprites have gotten all of their data discovered, and um, a lot of them, uh, a lot of almost every single uh, most common one we've figured everything out about so now um, you'll see some of these let me try and find it here um, All right, red, red uh, exclamation mark switch. You'll see that the field here is called trigger event ID. And what that does, and some sprites have this, some sprites don't. What that does is, is it triggers an event with another sprite. So for example, I'll choose sprite number 197. What this is, is a sprite that when triggered, it will destroy whatever block is underneath of it, which is pretty useful for, say you're making a level and you have uh, something that looks like this. and you want Mario to be able to find this switch to break these blocks and continue on with the level so you can put this sprite on top of the block that you want destroyed set its triggering ID to the same triggering ID as your switch so if this switch says triggering ID 3 this switch needs to be triggering ID 3 if this is not 3 then when you land on the switch this won't happen this won't activate destroying these blocks 
So we look at this, and we can change its width and its height. So let's go ahead and change its height. And that will actually destroy all of the blocks underneath of it when you hit this switch. You can have multiple in there, and that's why the uh, triggering event ID exists. Is Say we put another one down here. And we set this like that. Oops. And we set this one down here. Well, you want this one to destroy these blocks and this one to destroy these blocks. So that's triggering ID is set to 3. This triggering ID is set to 3. This triggering ID is set to 3. So we'll set this to 4. And of course, this now needs to be set to 4. So not bad, right? Now, different uh, sprites will take advantage of the triggering event ID. There are uh, lots to experiment with and play with. I'm not going to get into them all here, but there's uh, things that will make coins appear and uh, things that will make platforms appear. Uh, you can make actual individual sprites appear with these uh, triggering event IDs and everything like that. So uh, it just takes some experimentation. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a question that you've probably got on your mind and that is why are some of these fields black and some of these fields red why can I use the water bug but if I click on giant pink floating log or rather let's pick one that's easier to see amp electric ball he appears as red you see that red box around him the other question you probably have is why is there a number after this? And they're related. If an object has a dash next to it, it means that you can use it in every level that you want. Any level that you make, you can use that sprite. So springing jump board, you can use this in any level that has a dash next to it. The ones that have the numbers next to it, you have to go up to level configuration, go to sprite sets, and check this out. Each of these numbers is a set of sprites and in each number has a drop down and you can only choose one of these sets of sprites so you can only have desert enemies or castle enemies or water enemies and so on for this set and each of these has a unique set of sprites this number this 16-1 or this 6-4 corresponds to this number down the column followed by this number so as you can see 6-4 is set to red so that's because here we've got 6 set to 0. If we set 6 to 4, this eel is no longer red. This eel will not be visible in game. I guess this is a, a, a debug sprite. Not all sprites will actually do anything for you. 16-1. Um, so we go to our level configuration, and we look at 16, and 1 is flag and line platforms, or the different bosses. Uh, 10 has giant wigglers and arrows and one-way doors. So it can be kind of confusing to think of, well, what sprites can I actually use in my game? And so that's why I created this sprite list. What you'll see here is a box with individual boxes inside of it. This is the first row, this is the second row, and then these are all of the drop-down options. And the sprites that are grouped together in those drop-down options are grouped together in these uh, purpley red boxes. So you can look at this list and, and look at it and quickly tell, okay, so for my level I can either have Lakitu's or Big Boo Ghosts. Well, I'm making a ghost house, so I'll stick with this one. And it includes the Little Boos, and I can't tell what that guy is under there, and the pumpkins. Or you can have these fire guys, but then you can't have any of the Boo guys. Um, I'll give you a link to this image down there below in the uh, description. And I think that's pretty much everything on sprites. I'll get into more detail about some of the more tricky sprites at another time, but I just want to give you a quick overview as to why some sprites will work, some sprites won't work, how you can make them work, and what all of uh, what this sprite data means. For the most part, you're not going to have to mess with the sprite, raw sprite data. You just uh, choose these directions or choose these uh, variables here. Pretty nice, right? All right, well, have fun level editing, and I'll see you next time.